It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, you can see behind me, I got Ed McLaughlin. You know, Ed is a regular on the end of the day with Ray. And I want to bring Ed back today to talk about the transitioning process of all industries. All industries go through these transitions. The imaging channel, the document imaging channel, knows it has to be in transition. I had my good friend Jake Van De Hay on yesterday from Marco, and he's talking about how he's transitioning his team up there to be more services focused. But Ed, you know, there's a there's a lot going on in the world around us, and we know in our industry, the Document Entity Channel, we, we got to make some serious changes. And, you know, we were talking a while back of some industries that transitioned, and I thought, you know, you had a great story about the telephony business, and I wanted you to kind of share that and give us some thoughts. I mean, what do we got to do here to ramp up and kick ourselves in the ass to get going? Well, all industries go through this transition. I mean, this really isn't is an amazing. Uh, first of all, products lose their value from the time they're introduced. The, the day they're introduced, they begin to lose value, mm -hmm. and and they continue to lose value. And usually, it's the services around them that that start to surpass the value of the product itself. And we're certainly in that phase now. Mm -hmm. So, product centric is is absolutely not the way to be. And I thought yesterday's interview you had with Jay was really spot on. I mean, they, they're they doing many of the things that we really need to get serious about mm -hmm. and transitioning. If we look at the, at the um, telecommunications industry, uh, and that's where our conversation really came in uh, a few weeks ago, where they were really time and distance and a very product-centric uh, they were very transactional in the way they went around the business. But today, there's a lot less people involved mm -hmm. in, in telecommunications. I mean, at one time, it was one company, AT&T. Once the divestiture took place, it was a whole multitude of people. It's really now thinned out. And the people that it's thinned out to uh, are primarily services-related companies. They are really, they could care less about the time and distance and twisted wire, a twisted pair uh, system that they've had in the past. It's all voice over IP, they're, they're looking at business processes and they've completely transitioned to be account centric. And that's where we need to be. We need to be focused on accounts and I'll just call it account intimate, which means that we need to get away from the thought process that one person in an account is it. We need a team of people to help them. And, you know, you've heard me say many times in the past, old's forever new. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first started in the industry, when you were hired, uh, and I started with 3M Company, when you were hired, you were a territory sales rep. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you became successful becoming a territory sales rep, they would give you a small, a much, much smaller geographic area and then it would be assigned accounts and you would have these targeted accounts that you would go in and try to penetrate. And your compensation plan changed. It became a little bit more fixed and a little less variable. Mm -hmm. When I first started out, it was probably close to 90% variable. Uh, and then it went into a, a, a different mix. The next level would be uh, a special accounts and it was nothing but assigned accounts. You didn't have a geographic territory anymore. They got to the point where you handled more than one product mm -hmm. and, and you would have to call upon the facsimile specialist, the micrographic specialist, background music specialist, action paper specialist, the, uh, the printing product specialist. And you would work in an account to find out how you could develop business for 3M in that account. And we've completely gotten away from that and mm -hmm. completely gotten away from the whole idea of that. Uh, because we haven't had to. Uh, when we were beginning, it was necessary. Then things moved fast to, to print, and, and print became an important part of the business process. As it was part of the business process, people were buying it, and we didn't have to sell it as hard. Mm -hmm. And so we became quite transactional. And quite frankly, I noticed in the uh, starting in the 80s and, and probably through the 90s, uh, it really became transactional. That started when the change in the uh, depreciation laws occurred in 1982. Mm -hmm. We began a transition to going to lease and everybody was just selling monthly payments. And all of a sudden, everything just completely changed to the transaction business and people made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But the ride's over. Yeah, it was I mean, a race to the bottom. We were at the bottom. 
<laughs> we all went on a race to the bottom, and now we're at the bottom. So, well, we, we, some of it we did to ourselves because mm -hmm. we didn't really keep up with the value we were bringing. Some of the trans, some of the um, cost saving, job saving, productivity things that we brought to the business, uh, we took for granted. And maybe didn't really understand them. We didn't get into the training aspect. And people don't put money into their people anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's changed a lot. Well, you know, I started at Lanier, which came from 3M. You know, that was a big part of 3M. Mm -hmm. You called Lanier 3M at the time. But the training was. It was very, very regimented. It was very professionally done. You know, we used to have a meeting every single Wednesday. And I think you were telling me that, hell, you were doing that 17 years prior to my career. So... Absolutely. You, you know, this, and, uh, you know, I wonder sometimes if our friends are, are that regimented about their training. But, you know, when you talk about this account-centric rep, and, and it's, uh, it's interesting to me because when I spent a couple of years with Milton Bartley at ImageQuest in Nashville, you know, an IT services company, that, that's really how we went to market. You know, we went mm -hmm. to market with these account-centric reps that were focused on the profitability of the entire account, making sure we were delivering the benefits to the entire account from all the products that we sold. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's, it's this all the products that we sell, I think, is a big confusion. If we look at our friends mm -hmm. today, they're like, we don't, they don't know what to add to the portfolio. And, you know, Marco's a great example. I know they have our partner program they're trying to work with some people on. But, you know, how does a, how does a dealer, Ed, you know, what, what are the steps they need to take before you even start training on how to make an account-centric sales reps? What are the steps they need to take to try to bring some of these products to play? Well, there's so many, I mean... Where, where do you really begin, I guess? I mean, with all these different products, first of all, you and I have had conversations before about how do you transition into different services. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a question of different, bringing different products. How do you become focused on the different services mm -hmm. and how do you begin to grow your own? Your opinion is right now that you need to buy something mm -hmm. and bring it in. I'm not quite on that page. Mm -hmm. I really see partnering with someone until you understand what it is, thoroughly understand the business processes, understand the intricacies of the business, then buy something. Mm -hmm. So I'm about building the knowledge because at the end of the day, the services business and account-centric business is based on knowledge. What you're selling is your knowledge to make their business more productive. Mm -hmm. You're looking for ways to improve the efficiency of their organization. You need to understand their business then you apply what you do to help that business. So where many of you had, a, we had a conversation actually a couple of weeks ago and you had a, a, a end of day with Ray about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it we were talking about that, that day with Steve Jobs and, and where he was interviewed and a guy kind of insulted him. And, and what Steve said is you can go and take technology to the customer and you might be able to do four or five things better than anybody else in the, in the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. But how relevant is that to making something fit into the total picture of how that uh, company does business? And the real answer in order to really get scale and volume is to go to the customer first and bring the customer back and then find out how you can take your technology and apply that technology or, if you will, your knowledge and how you can apply that to the customer's needs. And that's where we need to get to. Mm -hmm. That's going to require partnering up with people, putting teams together with knowledge base. You have to develop the knowledge and bring the knowledge to the customer, but you can't start running out with a lot of knowledge to say, hey, can you use this? Yeah. No, that's not how it works. No, I agree. You really need to get close to the account and then decide what you can bring to them. Mm -hmm. And how do you go about bringing it to them? Because you may be able to solve a problem, but if you can't solve the problem efficiently, what does it matter? If we're going to increase his cost to do something, nobody's interested in doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to find ways to do things that make sense to help the productivity of the of the account. That's well, what it's all about. Well, you know, I remember we talk, having conversations with, with clients, with, with Milton in the IT side of it, and it was really about digging into the processes of that company and how that company works, a lot of the stuff that Jake was talking about yesterday. Mm -hmm. And those... Uh, a lot of times, I think, when you're basing it off the product, Ed, you're going in there and you're trying to look so you can quickly jam that product into the conversation. When you take the products out of the equation, you're really on a quest for information and knowledge. And that knowledge can come from those customers in tenfold if we just shut the hell up and listen to them. 
And I even brought up the comment that maybe we should have advisory boards built of some of our customers in the marketplace today and really start talking to these end users at a different level. Because there is a lot of services out there. There's a lot of commodity services out there. We don't want to jump into from one commodity to the other. And, you know, but it all boils down to the mindset to train our people. It boils down to the mindset of the leadership that they have to make a transition and they have to start seriously taking this, or they have to take this stuff extremely seriously. But, you know, Ed, I got to, you know, you've been around a long time in the industry. You've seen a lot of crap come and go. And, uh, you know, I'm sure, hopefully you'll never see anything this bad again. But, you know, is there anything you want to add to our friends? I mean, I think we're, we beat them up enough. We told them they got a transition. But, you know, what, 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 what's the next step for these guys and gals? I mean, they, we, I, it's just... We're just decide, you have to decide to do it. I mean, we're fortunate. One of the things that I've heard you say a couple different times is that we've had a peek into the future. Mm -hmm. And that really is true. We had, a, we had a chance to look at what the future is going to bring to us. And we have to be starting to plan for it. And if we, if we don't realize now that the processes have changed, uh, I'll tell you what I, I absolutely have grown to hate is the, is the term, uh, the new normal. Oh yeah. Trust me. I, I am so sick and tired of hearing that phrase. I, I want to puke, um, very candidly change is normal. That is life. It has been, it is going to change. It's been changing. It's constantly changing. And we're, we're having some changes that are going on now. This is the first damn pandemic that's ever existed in the, in the history of the world. We've treated it a little bit differently and we've behaved a little bit differently as a consequence of it, but it's not the first one that ever occurred for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we need to get our, our grips around things and say, Change is change, and how do we adapt to the change? Because it's adaptation that creates survival. And there's nothing unusual about that. There's no new norm. There's just normal life that goes through an evolution of change, and we're in the process of it. But what happens is those people that evolve with the change survive and become stronger and become masters of that new situation of, of, of the change that has developed. And that's really what we're facing right now. We've had an accelerated peak around the corner. So it only makes sense to garner all the knowledge that you've got and start making the processes. If you were putting it off, stop putting it off. Mm -hmm. If you want to wait until you learn it all, you'll probably never get there because it will change before you figure it all out. So partner up with somebody, learn something from somebody else gain knowledge, develop knowledge, put money into your people, mm -hmm. reward your people for what you need and what you want, not just what you've always done. Mm -hmm. If you've been doing it that way for 25 or 30 years, guess what? It's time to bloody change it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's too old of a process. If the process has been around that long, it's not time to intrude. It's out of date. Yep. You start making some switches with it. Um, and that's the biggest advice I can give anybody right now. I see the things that Marco's doing, and quite frankly, I think they've done some really interesting things. And they're not the only ones. I'm absolutely positive there's others out there, and I just don't know it. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, and I can't be everywhere, and I'm not everywhere. But I see generally what the market is doing, and generally uh, we're holding back a little bit or waiting for something to come to us. Mm -hmm. um, we may have to reach out to, because not everything can get to us right away. No, we got to go so, find it. <laughs> you know, there's some friends of mine in, in the UK that are putting a program together. Uh, and actually, I just thought of this just now. Um, I, I should have thought of it before we even got started. But I'm a little, I'm somewhat involved in it. And uh, it's, it's called Growth in MPS and uh, Success in MPS. It's really, it's really not about MPS so much as it is about transitioning your company to a, a, an account-centric, services-centric environment, with building teams and building things for the future. And much of their information will be announced probably in coming months. But uh, it's they, Chris Holgate has brought together roughly about eight or nine really successful people that have expertise in particular fields. Mm -hmm. And it's going to bring them out to help people uh, migrate. I think it's a wonderful idea. I know Chris. We'll have to get him on the end of the day with Ray when he's ready. That'd be interesting. Uh, it might not be a bad idea. He's really a, a lovely guy, and 
and I think uh, he'd, he'd make a good conversation for you, a good interview. Well, Ed, you know, it's always great having you on. And, you know, I said a long time ago before the pandemic even started that we need to substitute change management for modification management. Change comes too late. If you modify along the way, you're always ready. So we got to start well, modifying. Gotta constantly looking around. you, you got to look around the corner. you got to peek as far as you can and try to modify because evolution is the way to go. Revolutionary changes mm -hmm. never really work. Mm -hmm. uh, they, have to, they have to come gradually. Yep. Even when we had our revolution... Uh, we broke away from England. I mean, it, it was we we cut the cord, but it took it took a couple more than a few years mm -hmm. to get to the point where we actually had a constitution and knew exactly where we were going. Mm -hmm. It took some while to evolve from a confederacy of states to the United States. It took quite some time. It's still evolving. And, um, <laughs> and that's the way life is. Yep. Yep. And when you do it successfully, it takes it's an evolutionary event. Yep. Well, French had to do it twice. Yeah. Well. Because it didn't work the first time. <laughs> Ed, it's so great to have you on. I look forward to getting with Chris. You have a great weekend. Because, my friends, we all know this. Status quo is the killer of all that will be invented. Don't get stuck in Don't status quo. Don't get stuck quo. there. All right, buddy. Have a great day, my Take friends. Take care. Have a great day.